everybody. Sasha here, Laura there, and it's us, and I'm singing. <laughs> Apparently, that's how I'm going to start this one. How is everybody today? So excited to be here with the one and only the pitch girl and uh, i let i will absolutely let her introduce herself in a second i always like to give everybody a minute to get comfortable this one's gonna be a great one so like popcorn maybe you need like a pen and paper you know just settle right in butt cushion butt cushions help uh i'm, I'm a huge fan so get comfortable i'm gonna share this and you know what if there's anybody out there that you know needs to know more about branding and really getting seen share us plus aren't we cute now we look adorable so without further ado what i want to do what i want to do further ado huh, uh is say hello thank you so much for joining us so much for joining me laura and i'm gonna let her introduce herself um, a little bit more than i have <laughs> <laughs> well thank you sasha uh i'm i'm sort of getting used to the horn thing polishing up the horns so I am Laura Allen. I am the pitch girl. I can teach anyone to pitch anything in 15 seconds flat. I once closed a $5.5 million deal from a cold call. And I won't make you do a cold call, but if you want to learn how to pitch and sell and knock it out of the park, I can be found at thepitchgirl.com. Less than a minute. <laughs> Which I will put up at the end, I promise. Perfect. So, the, the, Laura, I, I got to say, I love it. I love the the pitch, which is really what we're here to talk about. Your pitch is flawless. Of course it is. I expect it to be. Um, and, and your horns, very, very good polishing. I, I think you've got some good sheen going on there. <laughs> so why don't we move on and, and talk about this 15-second pitch idea, because you are the champion of the 15-second pitch. And I agree wholeheartedly with you. <laughs> I think you're right. Really, that's what it comes down to. Because I don't remember the last time I stood in an elevator and talked with somebody for two minutes. So I think the concept of a 15 second pitch really fits with today's marketing techniques. What do you think? I think absolutely. Uh, back in the day, you're not supposed to say back in the day, but I will. Back in the day, it was a two minute elevator pitch. I used to think, how tall is that building, right? Who has two minutes to listen to your pitch? It needs to be just clear, concise, and compelling. You need to grab the listener or you've lost them for good. And you can do a lot in 15 seconds if you really focus in on your target market and you really know your value. Uh, a lot of people are afraid. They can be small, especially women. And men hear me say that, and they're, oh, you know, you can't say that. Yes, I can say that because it's true. And when women hear me say that, they say, yeah, I need to get your number because I pitch small and I need to be out there. I need to be close in sales. I need to be more confident in my pitch. And it's all about having this little formula that I came up with a long time ago at a networking event with a bunch of tech guys. And I asked this guy what he did. And he started hyperventilating and breaking into a sweat. And he proceeded to tell me for about seven minutes why it was impossible to explain what he did and why going to that networking event was pure hell. And I thought to myself, there has to be a better way. So I came up with this concept of the 15-second pitch to make it easier for everybody to pitch um, whenever they need to. And, well, and you know what? There's so much to be said for that that confidence factor that you get when you know what you're gonna say to someone right? right it's it's not just like okay i have two minutes to explain the good the bad that's not the point you have 15 seconds to make well oh piece of candy i want more right and that is really what you do and what you harness uh you did an amazing couple of 15 second pitches for zach Oh my God, um, which I love. Oh, and by the way, you're getting love on the horns. It's not just me. Yes. Everybody loves the horns. <laughs> and uh, hello to you, Tony. Nice to meet you. Thank you for joining. How are you, Laura? Tony would like to know. I'm fantastic. Couldn't be better. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Uh, so it's really about getting that short, quick, impactful statement that makes them go, oh, I need to know more, right? Because right. 
you know, attention spans, maybe a little less than they uh, they used to be five, ten years ago, right? I mean, it used to be standard practice to go to a soiree and chat it up with someone for God knows how long. Now, you're going to get like you know, this much of a text if you're lucky. So knowing and having that quick, easy spiel is definitely super important, which kind of brings me to our next point, which is, Branding and positioning. So a pitch for every niche. This is something that you are huge on. I, again, I'm your biggest fan, so I agree wholeheartedly. But you truly believe that we need multiple little blurbs, little 15-second pitches, so that we have one ready for each and every scenario that we run into, at least the really powerful ones. Is that? Do I have that concept right? You, you have it totally correct. <laughs> And it's, you know, sometimes people will say to me, I've been working on the perfect pitch. I'm looking for the perfect pitch. And what I'll say is, if you have a couple different pitches to choose from, you're always ready no matter what the opportunity is. So right now I'm working with a couple, you know, high-powered women, and one of them is really honing her speaking skills. So what we will do when we work together, she has a couple pitches, uh, that talk about her life coaching, and what we will do is craft a pitch that's all about her as a speaker. So she's going to these different events, and it might be an event where they're looking for high caliber speakers. She's going to bust out the speaker pitch and be at the ready. Wow. And having that pitch at the ready, uh, it, it makes such an impact. And it, it makes you feel like you're in control of the situation. You're not flying by the, by the seat of your pants. You're saying something that you believe in and that you know, and that perfectly captures the interest of your target audience, right? Now, how how do you do this? And I, I, don't, I don't want you to give away all your secrets because guys, honestly, if you have the time and money and you need the help, you need Laura. This is why she, she I, I mine. Uh, but I'll share because I'm nice. And, uh, so let's talk about this. How can a brand really stand out from the crowd? And I know having a pitch for every niche, definitely one of them, right? Being able to walk in a room and say, oh, well, bam, I am that awesome, really does work in your favor. But how can they do that? So what are some of the other ways that they can really use to stand out from this endless noise? Yeah, I think, I think a lot of it, you know, we live in a visual society, especially with social media. So even though the horns are kind of silly, there's a purpose to it behind my branding, right? The pitchfork. And I, it takes a little bit, you have to think about it for a second, right? You see the pitchfork, it's like, oh, the pitch, pitchfork. And what I noticed for myself was I would see all these people that weren't necessarily the most zen people in the world from what I know and you'd be like, oh have a blessed day and, and have you know this very spiritual kind of seeming uh, branding and, and the reality wasn't quite there. So I'm like, you know what? For me, I need to be out and about, I need to be bold and I'm all about making the fool of yourself in a good way because who cares? And no one's gonna forget the horns. Right? It's not going to resonate with some people. I have a couple of clients that are extremely religious. And I, you know what? I worried a little bit when I sent them the website. I'm like, oh, this is great. This is fun. It's different. They know I'm not satanic, right? It's fun and it's different and it's bold and it allows me to stand out. And that's what I help them do too. And that's what you do, Sasha, is coming up with the visuals and being consistent with their brand names. I see a lot of people. They will throw anything up on Pinterest, on Twitter, on Facebook, and it looks totally different. The only reason I know it's the same brand, if it's an individual or a company, is because of, you know, maybe they have a name or a website on it, but it's really inconsistent, and it causes confusion for the people that are looking at your stuff. So it needs to be bold, it needs to be different, it needs to stand out, and it needs to be consistent, just like your pitch. Exactly, because even though the point of branding is instant recognition, you cannot build that instantly. You have to develop it over time by giving people the same images, the same sounds, the same things again and again and again to kind of wedge that really into their minds. And one of the best ways to catch the attention is to use things like this to embody your brand and to be part of your brand. And you're right, I totally do it. I'm sitting here. 
I look like my logo. I am totally cool with that. Um, I don't have a pitchfork. I'm slightly jealous. But I do have an adorable little purple hat. So there you go. And the more fun you have with it, the more real you are with it, the more you're going to stand out from the crowd and the more people are going to learn to connect with you and, and really enjoy what you're putting out. Kind of like these things, which I'm hoping more and more people enjoy that we're putting them out. Yeah. I should not wear the hat. The hat makes me more sassy. But <laughs> but that kind of leads me again. Can you ever be too sassy? Can you ever really be too sassy? I can't. I, I, I'm like entirely head to toe sassy. So I really don't have a way away from that. Some people can be too sassy. Um, definitely those who, never mind. Well, we'll just leave that one right where it is. So let's move on to the next point, which is there's a lot of people out there and, and it's a theme I'm seeing. And maybe it's just this year. Maybe it's the, the state, it, it, well, in the States and Canada and everywhere. But there's a lot of people who are used to the same old, same old. Everything is the same every time, tried and true. This is the way it used to work. This is the way it should always work. That's not the way it works, but that's what they believe. So we're, we want to talk about the tried and true versus the new and bold because there's people out there that are really struggling with one or the other concept or even how to marry them. Yeah, and the tried and true for one person may not be the tried and true for someone else. So what I'm seeing a lot is people will come to me and they spend a lot of money on, you know, working with this internet guru, picking up this package. And what they found was, you know what? Um, it didn't work for what I'm doing. Maybe it would have worked six months ago or a year ago to, you know, spend a lot of money on Facebook ads to push people to a webinar. It's not working today. Hey, Laura, what can we do? And what we can do is a mix of things. We can do a tried and true newsletter. That's going to work for some people. Um, it might be going live like this and being interviewed because there's a lot of people on Facebook all the time. So we dip into that stream and get in front of them. Um, for other people, they may have to be bold, right? Let's say you're an accountant. Accountants are not the most exciting people sometimes, but what if you're a bold accountant Who's like, look, you know, I'm doing things differently. I'm working with entrepreneurs. I am proactive. I'm going to tell you the things that you can write off. I'm going to tell you the things to look out for. And you were really in the person's business and really partnering with them. Not, not a literal partnership, but you were really helping them out, advocating for them. You would stand out, right? And people would refer you. So it, is all trial and error to a certain extent. I've never found a magic bullet. I've never found the perfect email sequence for everybody. Um, it's hard work and that's how people do the things that they do. And I, I think you hear a lot of people, oh, you know, the four hour work week, that's awesome. That's a great goal. That is not the reality for my clients. That, that is for sure. I don't even know if I could survive that. I mean, I'm a literal shark. I will die if I stop working. Um, but I, I mean, I do hear what you're saying and that's exactly what it comes down to. It's being able to, to push the boundaries a little bit and shake people up while staying really true to the people watching because the people watching are as diverse as you and I are, as, as we are from anybody else. So if, if you're not adjusting and fixing and tweaking until you get the right messages and you're making a pitch for every niche, it, it takes work, right? It's not something that magically can build overnight. Um, it, I mean, it's taken me two years to get to this point. So, <laughs> right? <laughs> that's that's totally my, my thing. Now, we've got some great people out there. Oh, and by the way, yeah. still more love. Still more love for your horns. Just, Yay. just saying. Um, Thank you, Josh. This is just a very, very small example of things that you can do. But what Laura is really trying to express is that you want to keep trying different things, right? And and if I'm if I'm wrong or I'm speaking out of turn, but both of us really truly feel that the second you stop trying new things is the second you are letting your business die. <laughs> because yes. the world changes and marketing changes and everything changes so fast, your business needs to change too. Uh, am I right? Yes, 100%. And most people come to me, they say, I need more business. I lost my main client. Um, I need to generate more revenue. And I will make them or encourage them strongly to hit the ground running that day. 
it's better if we start pitching right away and we figure out what works and what doesn't than if we sit around for six months. A lot of people don't have that luxury of sitting around for six months and coming up with a perfect website and the perfect business plan and the best marketing plan. That stuff gets put in the file cabinet anyway, right? That business plan, it's changing as you're writing it. It's a great thing to have, but let's start pitching today. Let's start testing things out today. Let's not spend $100,000 on a website for something that we don't know if anybody wants it or anybody cares. Let's start tweaking and testing and, and getting real business sooner because it's all theoretical until somebody pulls out that credit card and gives you the number. And I think that is probably something we really need to, to impress upon people is done is better than perfect. You're never going to be perfect. Um, what you think is perfect now is going to look ridiculous two years from now. <laughs> wow, did I see that one recently. Um, and so it's important to just start doing and start doing now and doing more because one thing I've learned in business is that doing was the thing that taught me the most because until I screwed it up and learned from it, I really didn't understand what all these wonderful people were telling me. Uh, the other thing that I really got out of it is that what works for you probably doesn't work for me. I have my own style. And the more that you are genuine to your style and to what's in, in here and your core and who you are, the more you'll speak to your audience because right. it's real, right? Now, I mean, other than putting on a silly purple hat or a gorgeous red set of horns, what, what can you give our audience? What is one thing that they can do today, right now, to begin improving their brand visibility? You can embrace that quirkiness about yourself, the, the thing that you might be trying to hide, right? When, when I would go to these classes and, and try to be a perfect, polished speaker who never said like or and and didn't move her hands. And, and people were like, what the hell is that? And then I would roll up and I would go to speaking gigs and I would talk about, hey, there was a homeless man on the subway. This was his pitch. I don't want you guys to ever be in that situation. And people were like, yeah, you're right. I saw I saw that homeless guy on the subway. I don't want to be in that situation. So I really started speaking to where people were at and just talking about my life. And you know, when the shit hit the fan for me in 2008, everything fell apart. I ended up sleeping on my friend's couch. I think, you know, when we talk about these things, I was afraid to talk about it in the beginning. So I'm like, who the hell is going to take advice from me? If I failed and I'm sleeping on my friend's couch and what you learn is the real people, the real scrappy people, the great people, they had to go through a lot of different failures, right? The PR that we see, the press releases that we see, it's like, oh, you know, Laura was out one day on the Upper West Side and she met a mysterious investor who decided to give her a million dollars. You're like, that's not really, even if you did have a scenario like that, there's a lot more that goes into it. So I started talking about the scary, ugly, scrappy depression that people deal with. And I got a ton more business because they sensed that it was real. When I was trying to be perfect and polished and like everyone else, there was something that didn't fit, right? There's something about the red hair and the perfect little Ann Taylor suit it didn't, people didn't buy it, right? Even though I oh, like to wear my you business didn't suits. I didn't buy it. I was trying to be something else. So tap into whatever it is that makes you different, that makes you real. I started talking about shows that I watch, Breaking Bad. I started talking about The Wire and connecting with people through that. If, if you watch The Wire, you're a very specific kind of person and you either love that show or you hated that show. And it's cool either way, but it's just tapping into people's interests. It's not all business, right? I like to work with people that I like to hang out with. You know, I do these VIP dinners and invite clients to my house. If you're somebody that, you know, I'm, I'm not really that into, I'm probably not going to work with you. Or... If you're someone where I really don't think that I can help you do what you want to do, let's say you've got to make $100,000 in the next three weeks or you're going to be homeless, I'm probably not the person to help you. <laughs> so it's all that's happening into interest 
and the business because that's more fun. You know, we spend a lot of time with our clients, at least I do, so I want to hang out with people that I like. That makes I don't know if that, that answered your question. <laughs> I, it, it, yes, I, I mean, it really comes down to that. Be authentically you because anything else comes off fake and fake is the biggest warning signal our society has taught us to look for. <laughs> At least that's my two cents or my summation yeah. of what you have to say. Now, we do have an awesome question from lovely Tamara who apparently loves to fall forward every day. And I'm probably uh, reading that one wrong, but... You know, uh, she, she can kick me later for it. But she would like to know your best advice for the shy wallflowers to be more bold. Um, you, you know, actually, shy wallflowers like me, too. So I'd love to hear it. Yeah, I, I get this question a lot because they say to me, hey, look, you know, I'm never going to be, you know, Tony Robbins jumping over the desk. And I say, that's totally cool. So if you're going to a networking event, bring your posse. So I have the pitch girl posse, and what happens is I roll up with three or four or five of my clients and my friends, and we go, we don't hang out together the whole night, the idea is to meet new people, but there's always a friendly face across the room. And if I'm showing up with Gabby and Melanie and Leah and different people in my world and Debbie, Debbie can pitch me better than anybody on the planet. She knows me very well. So we third party pitch each other, which makes it easier. Hey, I want you to meet Debbie. She's working for a new organization that focuses on helping people be happier in the workplace. That's my pitch. The person's going to lean in and want to learn more. Or they're like, yeah, I don't, I don't really care about my workers. As long as they're you know, making money, who cares? Then that's not Debbie's person. But it's that third party pitch. And you feel a little less scared when your people are in the room. So, so that's one way to do it. And I think it's just trying to conquer the fear a little bit each day. You know, most people wouldn't think, Sasha, that you are an introvert, right? But you might be, you might be nervous at my VIP dinner because there are physically people in the room where you're totally fine on video. So this is a comfortable space for you. And a lot of people are like, oh, you can pay me enough to get on video with live people watching right now. You know, what if I sneeze? What if I make an ass of myself? So I think it's finding what's comfortable for you and doing it more and more. Uh, yeah, finding what's comfortable for you is, you know, nail, hammer, head, oh, my God. Because... <laughs> The second you have to operate outside of that that comfort zone, or like I like to call it, operating outside of your zone of genius, you're working a heck of a lot harder to make the same impression, really. And in the end, nobody can hold up that facade for, for very long. I mean, sure, I can't handle people in the same room with me at the same time for longer than like five seconds without like crying. And that's where people would really see that introverted side of me. But this is a great medium for me to be able to reach out and have fun and talk to people and enjoy them without anybody necessarily seeing that that horrible fluke uh, downfall. <laughs> um, but that's, that's what I'm saying is that if someone like me, who is also a horrible, terrible wallflower, can still find a way through trial and and experiment because lord knows i did not start out doing live videos uh my first thing was ever uh, was an event fundraising for uh, an lgbtq organization so totally you're gonna try a bunch of things you're gonna fail a bunch of things you're gonna learn what feels most comfortable for you and once you do that like laura said latch on to it and don't let go right that's the whole idea um by the way diane says Big, big horns are in this season. Oh, so, you know, got to get yourself some big it. horns. I, I'm going to have to go get myself a pair now, won't lie. All right. So we've had some great participation here. Laura, what would you like to tell our audience? I mean, I'm, I, I, I could ramble on for days, but what can you tell them? And what, what's your message? What's the message you really want to spread? Because I know you're like me and you want to motivate and empower and encourage people to do more with what they've got at their fingertips. And, and, you know, money, you don't want to throw that into advertising if you don't have a message. So 
what do we really want to tell these people so they can feel as inspired as I feel every time we talk? <laughs> I, I would say you don't need another course. You don't need another guru. You don't need a $50,000 retreat on an island with 10 influencers if you're struggling to be consistent with your cash flow. You have everything you need right now. And when we see different people promoting different systems and different programs, it gets overwhelming, right? And you have a tendency. I've done it too. I just did my taxes. I'm like, I, I bought a lot of shiny objects to help my business last year. And some of them I would purchase again and some of them, hell no. So I would say be really discerning about what you purchase. And if you purchase something, go through the whole program, do it. I see people buy a lot of different programs and guess what? There's conflicting advice in the programs. And then they're like, shit, I don't know what to do. So what if you started more simply and, you know, really dig deep. What is something I can do better than anyone else? Or what's something that makes me different? Am I a web designer that needs deadlines? If you are, you're in demand. Am I a freelance writer? that has never missed a deadline. If that can be your pitch, you will get opportunities because people think of freelancers as sometimes flaking out, taking on too much work. You can set yourself apart just by doing something simple and sticking with the message. I meet some of these people at networking events. They, they have a different pitch, but it's not a different niche. It's they're winging it every single time. And someone will come up to me and like, they're like, what is, you know, that girl that just got off the stage, what does she do? Something about management consulting. No one knows what management consulting means. You know, I hate to break it to you. You need to make it more specific and more compelling. Yep, uh, I, there's there's a bunch of things out there like um, digital marketing agency. I use it too. I know, I know, and I'm harping on myself here, but there's just a lot of terms that it's, it's not the way people think and as business owners because it's how we speak we don't always remember what it was like to speak that other language that you know for lack of a better term layman's language right so figuring out what that core piece is latching on to it and developing it god I mean how much would it save you and even even in like your first five years how much money do you think it would have saved you oh I, I'm ashamed to even <laughs> to even think about it, right? Because it's, and you know what? I learned some valuable things about some of the stuff because I'm like, this isn't magic. This isn't rocket science. You know, I've been talking about similar things, choosing niches, stuff like this for a long time. So there's some validation, but I would say, you know, I wish I had a nickel for every time someone came to me and said, I'm flat broke. Yeah. Laura, you know, I wish I would have come to you first before I spent all this cash in all the wrong directions, right? It's way easier to spend that money than to earn it. And oh, yeah. they wait until it's a dire situation sometimes to come to me and it might be too late. So I say start hustling today, start failing today because you can improve as you go. And make sure your message is memorable and it's something that somebody could repeat. Because I also, you know, I meet people at networking events. They're like, oh, my husband's looking for work. Oh, what does he do? That's the natural question, right? Um, something about IT and, um, well, honey, if you don't know what your husband does, how am I going to help him get a job, right? Like, I see this more frequently than you would expect. <laughs> so if you're going to pitch someone, you better know how to pitch them in a compelling way or you'll do more harm than good. Well, you're completely right. And and there is something to be said for first impressions. And sometimes if the first impression is less than favorable, it can be a lot harder to replace it than it would have been to just slow down and consider doing it a little bit different to begin with. <laughs> right? Yes. Uh, I, I just, oh gosh, I'm so, I'm so excited and overwhelmed with ideas. And by the way, every time Laura and I chat, I have to go and tinker with my website. This is always a thing that happens because she gives me ideas and reminds me of things and then I have to go tinker with my website. But I'm quite serious, guys. If you would like some help figuring out how to pitch yourself, short little snippets, I won't even lie, 
<laughs> Laura has easily helped me double my business because I went from saying I can help everybody, <laughs> which I mean, even I can't help help everybody, and Lord knows <laughs> I was harder for trying, but that's okay. So Laura's taught me a lot. Like I don't belong with everybody, and she like drastically increases what I'm able to do. So follow her. She's got a brand new website up, guys. That is yes, it's amazing, and uh, it's amazing. I'm just Sasha, gonna say it's amazing. Sasha built it. Sasha built it for me. And Sasha, do you know what? I was at TEDx. I had three people come up to me and say, your new website is freaking out of control, amazing, full. It's so you. That's what they said. They're like, it's so you. So guess what? That has to be consistent with everything else, too. I've met people that are kick-ass, badass people, and they got this, like, real corporate-looking website. That's a disconnect for people. If you're a badass, you need a badass website. If you're corporate and buttoned down, that's cool, too. There are going to be people that resonate with that, but make it consistent. Yep, and the easiest way to make it consistent is to be as true to yourself as humanly possible because it's going to come out anyways. Eventually, yes. that will come out anyways, just like Laura in her nice little suit. Yeah, <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, that just comes out anyways, and it doesn't always take alcohol. Uh, so please, guys. Be loose, be limber. Uh, visit visit Laura's website. She's got some great information there. Her blog is always off the hook. And I know that she'd be happy to talk to any one of you out there to try to really nail that 15-second pitch. I, I don't want to hear any more of this. I am so-and-so, and then I'm asleep before you finish. So <laughs> let's all commit, commit, commit. To commit to the pitch. Commit to the pitch. pitch. Commit to the pitch. Commit to the pitch. Okay, I've got a new thing. Oh, my goodness. This is what happens when Laura and I get together. Um, <laughs> or we could blame the hat. It's got too much energy in it. I can't say it's too much caffeine. I actually could use more. But I really, really appreciate all the time that you spent here with me, Laura. Is there anything else you'd like to say to our audience? Anything I've missed? Anything cool coming up? Because, oh, my goodness, I can't remember everything all the time. A good pitch today is better than the perfect pitch tomorrow. Start pitching now. Start pitching now. Don't wait. Yes. Um, even a bad pitch is still better than not pitching at all and not getting it off your chest and out from it and underneath your belt and whatever else the other words there are. <laughs> and, and hey, um, I really appreciate it, though. And the horns look fantastic. I, I, I just love the chance to spend with you. When is your next VIP 10 dinner? In case there's anybody out in the audience who wants to get themselves onto that exclusive list other than just me. Tuesday, April 17th. I just set out the e-bike today. Each one of my clients gets five minutes uh, to present to the group. It's an amazing group of people. And I will be timing them. They do their 15-second pitch. And they talk about a big goal, they get feedback, and it's on to the next person because I like to showcase my clients whenever I can. And you also do something really cool. Every at least you did in the last one, and, and it's gonna be a trend. I've already decided. When when they get to do these pitches and they stand up and they introduce, they get to wear the horns and hold yes. the pitchfork. I love that. Yeah, yeah, and everybody wanted to do it. Everybody wanted to wear the horns. I have a friend of mine, she's the CFO on Wall Street. I was like, I don't know if she, she, she got right up there. She owned it. She looked like the logo you created for me. She had her, she had her perfect suit on and she had the horns and she's badass. <laughs> oh man, you should have a photo of that one, but. Um, I have it, I have it. But that does, it brings, it brings us all together. It, it makes people feel connected and real and wholesome and uh, it's a lot easier to trust when you get the same message no matter which way you turn, right? right? And that's what a lot of people I think is missing. And that I even I have to speak up to that because I, I work with business owners on their websites and the branding and the marketing, the whole message. And one of the biggest problems when they're saying I'm not getting traffic or I'm not getting sales is that all of the different verticals look completely different. Yep. All right. Consistent. Consistency is cash flow. That's the other thing I will leave our, our faithful viewers with. <laughs> Consistency is cash, is cash flow. flow. I love that. So even if it is something simple and, and silly, have fun with it. Enjoy it. Commit to your pitch. Consistency is cash flow. And visit thepitchgirl.com 
she is fantastic and thank you so much laura i really really appreciate it and thank you to all of our wonderful viewers if you end up with any other questions drop them in the comments and i will be sure to hit you up um, with some awesome answers thank you very much you guys have a great day thank you sasha